Hello, hello, hello again, and welcome to a impromptu episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And before we get started, we want to thank our sponsor, Cards of Ivelisse, uh, specifically James Lockwood. Reach out to that guy. Uh, thank him for everything he does. He does community spotlights. He just had a new player of the month. Congratulations, Hunter Nance. Uh, he also just did one of those those articles again that we've been waiting for to come back out. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, he must have finished Octopath eight times. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, he probably did. Hold on. I have a stack of cards I'm moving because these are the cards I might consider for Nationals. Um, this is another stack over here. But anyway, I had to move it because it was sitting on my copy of Octopath. Uh, unopened, as you can see. I'll get to it after Nationals. That's my goal. So I've, I've had it for about two weeks. Until you top eight, then you're going to just grind out for Worlds, so you know. No, no, because it's open seven, so. That's true. Yeah, I have a break. Um, although I will be, work is very busy around the holidays, because I work for a nonprofit. So, uh, yeah, actually, I don't even know. Uh, is, 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 is Worlds in December? November. Oh, I don't, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. What we, I wish we knew now, like, yeah, what week I, it was. We I legit idea. don't know if I could go to Worlds. Um but I'm gonna play it on anyway, um, because I, I am trying to become the national champion. If I can't go to Worlds, that, that doesn't mean that like I shouldn't play. Like I want to become the champion or whatever, so I'm gonna play. Um, and I think uh, the way they did it last year is they want their strict number of people to go. Yeah. So if you can't go, it does pass down uh, to the next person in standings. Right. Right. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be that that big of a deal. Um, that being said, uh, you know James supports us. He supports this cast. So if you need some cards, if you need some foilies, uh, go see James. If you need them for Nats, it's a bit late unless you live in Orlando. Yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, but exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I, there's a couple um, cards I'm missing. I'm missing some Sid twos. I'm missing some uh, lightning, a few lightning cards. I think like maybe like a Rama. Um, mm -hmm. I really want. I think I have all these. Yeah, I really wanted to go with everything foiled out so that I could make changes at the last minute without stressing about the foils. Um, <laughs> these but, are the things we stress here on the Joker Bros podcast. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, but we'll, we'll make it happen. Anyway, let's and just And also, talk congratulations to Cody. Uh, official oh. announcement for his sponsorship from Cards of Ivelisse as a, a personal player rather than just being on the podcast, so that's pretty sweet, too. And now he's not on the podcast today. So, yeah. the well, irony. He's like, oh, I already did my job, right? So he's just going <laughs> to. Yeah, the irony. Uh, no, but it's really cool. it is really cool. Congratulations to Cody. The um, the things that happen when James sponsors you is pretty cool. Uh, we got a lot of perks, um, which makes it a lot easier collecting these foils. That's why I'm never, like, scrambling for foils. Uh, so that's super dope. Um, yeah, so just to get started, uh, what are you playing for Nationals, Zach? Uh, 50 cards and no more than three of each individual card. Yep. Okay. Are you pretty set on that? Or? <laughs> I am pretty confirmed. I might try to squeeze in a 51st card, but I'm a little okay. concerned about my tournament so results. Legend, I so. have Icewater Vikings, um, but it's it's like level five for me. Like, I don't think that – I think that I'm bringing it to test it. I have a um, – I actually have a lot of decks built. So um, level five has a whole new meaning for us, though. So oh, yeah, different, to different level five. <laughs> I have a a wind, uh, earth for soya deck, um, which tested really well. It tested really. So that's really like well. that's that's just like all the good worlds for us, right? Like we've had so much success with earth wind, and we're like, eh, put the yeah. soya in. Yeah. Um, um, no, I mean, in all seriousness, like earth wind is my comfort pick. That's where I know I will be if I just am scrambling and I don't know what to do. Like that's my default. Uh, but turbo is on the mind. So I usually keep two boxes, um, with stuff in it. Uh, but this box doesn't really mean anything. The box that I, that always means the most, and you'll, you'll, you'll notice this, Zach, if you, you know, when we play in locals, is the one that I actually wrote prime on prime yep. is the one that I carry with me. Oh, I know you got yours too. This is the one I always play. I put it, even if I'm not going to play this deck, it is the deck that I'm most leaning towards. I always keep it sleeved up in here. Um, I don't think that you'll be surprised by this. You'll be surprised by the sleeves, uh, because <laughs> I transport it from my wife. But, uh, yeah. So, my number one choice for Nationals right now, 
Mono Ice. Uh, Turbo. Um, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> if I had to... Now, I say it's my number one uh, because percentage-wise. I am about a 49% like chance of playing this deck. Um, I'm 51% chance of playing absolutely anything else. <laughs> Maybe a ham sandwich. It's like a pie chart, right? Like forty nine percent of it is ice. Yes. And like almost half. Like of I, the don't, rest of it I don't. I just... don't want to play this deck. Uh, this particular deck, this version, um, has Umeros, uh, which is really good on the draw. Um, which being on the draw is really bad in the mirror. So it's there's some irony there. It has uh, like three of the Squall Searchers. It has Celeste. Celeste is like the best okay, card so you're right like... now. You're on a weird, like even bigger mid range version. Like I'm, I'm still on like the Kura Same and yeah. no, I this like that whole yeah. So this is this card. is my number one choice. Um, at forty nine percent, not something I'm looking forward to. The decks that I want, uh, well, the to be yeah. fair though, the, the deck has gotten a little more enjoyable to pilot and its new well, because iteration. Squall has haste. Well, yeah, Squall Squall shouldn't have haste, but Squall does have haste. Right, I think that actually makes it more enjoyable. Uh, well, that plus just like the Kurosawa main makes it feel a little bigger. Like I feel like I can actually combat like having like L Renoa Legend there. Like there's more, yeah. like s there's more substance you can put on the board than just yeah, like I the old. I didn't like the DGS Sarah version. in that deck, but um, I feel I did like it you until did recently. Okay, I do I, now. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say when I was playing against Ian tonight specifically, I was testing Mono Water, um, and I was you see my wife packing my bag. Thanks, honey. <laughs> uh, um, I was testing Mono Water and um, yeah, it, I, Mono Water and Earth Wind and Sarah kept doing work. The two CP um, forward, the two uh, CP kept, Genesis when you have snow, yeah, yeah, it kept doing a lot of work. Actually, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty frustrating. Um, the other considerations for me, um, I don't even know where they are because they're, they're in this pile because a lot of the cards like don't translate to like having all of them. Um, so uh, the other choices for me right now is I would consider playing Mono Water. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really good. The problem is, is I'm not comfortable in the Mono Ice matchup, and I don't, I can't figure out like how to navigate it. Whether I'm supposed to play one backup on turn one, two backups on turn one, because <clears throat> you can't really do the the same thing as like when you just play the wall. You don't have a wall. Um, right, you right. Don't have, I mean, you have an Ash, but that's not. That's really how you're gonna get Mateus, but. Yeah, well, if you Rassler. have Razzler, if you yeah, go so, Ash Razzler, then like, I mean, life might be okay for a little while, but unless yeah. you don't have cards to reactivate her. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, yeah, so I would consider that. Um, I consider him out of water with like Nidhogg probably. Mm -hmm. Um, water, wind, Fasoya, uh, with the Sid Two package. Um, it, it's really uh. Jordan, Jordan D special um, that came from him and I tested it with him for a while uh, in in combination with um, Lawrence Olivia um, so that deck's really really cool uh, but without Sid 2 you have zero chance of winning against Turbo uh, you're right. going to see a repeated theme here actually um, my favorite pet deck that I made and I think Zach liked this deck quite a bit too was the Earth Lightning uh, deck featuring Lulu H, uh, Fasoya, yep. um, Minor, Minfilia, ways to reoccur the Lulu H special over and over. You reoccur the, the Lulu Gigas. specials over and over. Yeah, uh, yeah we've, we've gone from ranges where it had Calbrina, uh, Gigas, some of the versions had Behemoth, um, some of the versions had Uranger and Layak, uh, and Cactar and Dataluma, which was particularly powerful whenever you have all these big summons like Exodus, or maybe you're playing a Gito and Raiden. Right. Um, I've gone through all kinds of variations with the deck, maybe over a hundred different variations. Um, and so when you're playing the big summons, getting the Leylac is pretty sweet. The problem is, is as good as sometimes drawing the Cactar is um, against Turbo, uh, the way you used to beat, it's, it's, so, it's so ironic, the way you used to beat the Ice deck, the biggest counter to the Ice deck was Leylac. So good against Ice. It is the card that I never want to draw against Turbo. You never want to draw a card during their turn. Um, because right. they just you're, you're not going to have it, yeah. They just get it's to, as if they mill you. They get to like, yeah, they could just keep their cards in their hand, but it's like, oh, you drew a card. Well, now I'm going to play the Thaumaturge, right. you know, um, or, or I was, I had this imaginary champion, but I was going to have to lose the CP for playing it, but now I'm going to play it and you're going to discard your card. So yeah, I, I don't, 
So the deck I, is sweet. Uh, it does. It does beat. It does beat that deck in general. Um, my experience with it, and, and maybe this is not a good enough reason not to play it, but my experience with it is that it cannot beat a Riku H. Like if if, if my opponent's just like I'm gonna mill you, I'm just like, yep. There's <laughs> nothing I can do about that, you know. So okay, right. Um, yeah, the deck is very. Anybody who's played Magic, it feels a lot like playing Blue White Control. Like you just sit back there, yeah. you draw your cards, and or say Minfilia go. Or Minfilia is your Sphinx Revelation, right? Yep, Minfilia Sphinx is Rev. Like you just get back whatever you want. You can constantly usually, loop yeah, things. Yeah, usually you get back like just a bunch of specials for like a Lua, or you get back yeah, a bunch of specials for. Lua you get to H, a point or... where you you get your second Minfilia, and you go like you chuck the first Minfilia yeah. to combo with like Fusilias and Lulus and whatever. Or you and, like, break Alfids it to kill like a Nidhog. Yeah, or that, yeah. and then you just play your second one, get the first one back, plus whatever yep. piece you want for the rest of the lock, and it just keeps looping, and there's so much control. You sit back on your Behemoths and your Gigas, yep. and you can Exodus their board away, or whatever. It's fantastic. But Hecaton Chair is huge right now with all the Wind Earth lists that I've seen. Yep. The and, deck does uh, not it, function a... nearly as well without Right. There's a rumor that the Meta Potion guys could be on a similar list, Earth Lightning, um, thanks to a spoiled picture um and people that can't stop running their mouths um <laughs> in addition to that so they could probably have hecaton which is a little scary also and then if if they stick also with just the ice earth deck that brian and okimoto topped with uh running into the hecaton there would also be scary um mm -hmm. that being said i'm i'm very comfortable in like every other matchup i feel like yeah um, exactly not too worried about much else uh, with that deck particularly the other deck is and, and the, the problem here is that it's it's the witching hour you know and it, zach leaves here in about four hours from now right yeah about four hours i'll be in a car after sleeping for like probably two hours <laughs> and right, then so you get to the airport not a long time stop to la and then i mentioned zach hey like you know the problem with the monsters deck is right is we're so afraid of turbo like what if we just play sid 2 and then we have like no notes to reactivate it and we're always playing our backups etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, needs pretty good blocker against their deck yeah. right yeah um and then it uh it kind of hit me that zach doesn't have very long to test so i don't know if that's even an option well, but it's, see, it's a deck i would consider it's something like you don't have to worry about like me playing the exact like i want to play the same like team deck like is if we're playing a deck it should be because it's what we think gives us the best chance in the tournament yeah but if you're ahead of me that's not you know that's my problem. That's not your problem. So you still should be playing what you think is best. So yeah, I don't. Know. I, I mean, I also have less to. I have less to think about too. So like, for example, uh, if you have to play three or four, let's say you have to play three Turbo Ice decks, like you can't afford to give up the Turbo Ice matchup. You can't afford to just lose when you play against right. Turbo Ice. Whereas like I could lose against all against three of the people I play against Turbo Ice and maybe still make day two. Um, mm -hmm. So it is a little awkward. Uh, that because... actually, huh? That's interesting because that could definitely affect which deck you and I want to play based on. You have to play what you have to go one and three on the yeah. day one at like yep. worst to make day two, and then you're in best of threes. So yep. you could pick a deck that you know beats on everything but, and then you grind through the best of three rounds right whereas right. i have to slog through any jank that i face around one and two or like right. turbo and and then there's just there's, there's this interesting meta that i don't even think that most people are aware of right now is that and i don't even know if you're aware of that i don't think we've talked about this though but you could play like a very aggressive deck right now like let's say something like ice fire uh mm -hmm. ice lightning or fire lightning um something like very aggressive and you can sort of punish like the the room full of like wind earth players and the reason that is is because i my opinion is is the good earth win players will be on the on the draw um which is really strange uh because the earth wind deck wants to go on the draw because it wants to know whether it can play its two backups or it can play or it needs to play its wall it mm -hmm. cannot play its wall if it's going to play up against like let's say like a Yuna deck um because like if they go like or not Yuna, but like a fanford deck basically or any unit uh deck anyway but let's say let's say you go turn one wall uh, and you've exhausted six CP to play your wall. Um, and then they go like Yuna and a fan for it. And they've killed your six CP, but also developed a backup um, right. for eight CP. Um, that to me, that just seems absurd. Uh, so you, you can't just go turn one wall blind um, in Swiss particularly. Uh, but 
being on the draw lets you see if they're turbo, play your backups. Wind Earth has cards like uh, Cecil and Masked Woman, uh, which, you know, Matiski even pointed this out, that, like, those cards are just way better on the draw sometimes because you're not going to just want to sit around. So, like, Wind Earth can play those cards, react, play those, and then take the board back over. So being on the draw is not the worst, uh, mm -hmm. but playing two backups and then losing the turbo is, or playing wall and then losing the Fanford is. So you can punish those players by playing a very aggressive deck and just pushing them in um, right. when they choose to be on the draw. But how many of those players are going to run up against? How many of them uh, know what they're doing? That's really the How many are going to go on the draw? <laughs> like That's not something that necessarily people will... Yeah, that's you know, what I said. It's a weird game said, They'll it. take second. I'd be like, hmm, okay, and be happy about my turn one. Like, right. Uh, the 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 exception too is like maybe if you're per the the person on like the triple Amero or Umero version of Mono Ice, then they want to be in the draw so they can go like turn one Amero into Jesper into like Thaumaturge or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and that can be like really punishing. So maybe I just play Golbez. Yeah, but don't Cheese play Golbez for sure, because <laughs> I don't even know how in the world that deck would be turbo. Like, I, if you don't turn one Golbez on the play, like, how in the world are you going to, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how you're going to ever cast anything. That being said, <laughs> um, so, Zach, you're getting on a plane in four hours. Uh, the plan was for you to wake up and grind in the LCQ. I'm waking up in four hours. Okay, yeah, but but the plan oh, yeah. was to on Friday to wake up and grind in the LCQ. You no longer have to do that. How does that feel? Uh, Pretty damn good. <laughs> like, huge weight off the shoulders, like... That weight, that, but that weight didn't go. That that weight didn't just get freed up, right? Like, yeah, it kind of you know cycled back. Because well, <laughs> well, I was thinking it also got pushed it, onto Chris as the true. because before it was you two grinding out the LCQ. You know, you guys could go get beers if neither of you made it. You know, um, you guys could go out and, and 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 hang out with Matthew Rice and go get a beer. But now Matthew Rice is playing, right? Uh, right. So that might, oh, yeah. might didn't be. Didn't he option. make a big announcement that he wasn't playing? And he now was. he is. Now he is. Yeah. Um, and now you're queued. So now Chris Adams becomes the only member of, of Team ECPC to not be qualified. And not because he doesn't now deserve I don't it, have to but... knock him out of the tournament either. Like we don't have to face each other and <laughs> right. then have bad feelings. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited. I don't really know what else to say. I, I've tested hours and hours and hours on Octagon. Uh, I didn't answer Vince's... Um, Vince's question about my username, I forgot. Bossman69 uh, is my most frequent username. Uh, and that one is from uh, a movie, uh, which I loved. I've answered this before the podcast, so I don't know how Vince has missed it, because I think he commented on the podcast that we talked about. Uh, Mrs. Worldwide is a play on Mr. Worldwide, um, who we only know is Chad. We don't really know anything else about him. And if, you know, my most commonly recognized one is Chocobro, uh, I always get, which Chocobro is it? And then, like, they're like, they always guess Sam first, because I'm the one who grinds Octagon a lot. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so if you if you I don't know if anybody there, knows my name. Yeah. I'm there. Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we won't tell him it's Prodigy, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so if you guys see me on Octagon, jump in. I've been hosting games all day saying Nationals Test Prep, please join. I've been trying to grind all these decks against people. Um, there is some secretism that's going on. People want to keep their deck list secret, and, and I respect that. Uh, but at this last minute, I'm not necessarily that concerned about it uh, because people, it, it, it's too late for them to figure out based off just playing you in a couple of matches, your exact list. And the, the small, minute... Uh, Unless they right-click and save you deck. Yes. Yeah, I don't think they'll <laughs> do that, though. Um, and it'd be really awkward if they did. Uh, for both parties involved. Um, but so I, you know, I, I don't think there's enough time to figure it out. And let's say they did figure it out. Let's say they did look at the list or whatever and they right click viewed deck. Uh, I don't think they have enough time to test it and to analyze it and to get the same feedback that I had. There's, there's, there's minute things that you have to do on turn one and turn two with various decks to optimize your chances of winning. Uh, hands that you mulligan that you might not mulligan normally. Um, you know, there, like there's some earth wind hands that have like two two CP backups that you would keep in most decks, but maybe you just don't keep these in this deck. Um, so it, it just really depends. Um, like, for example, if I'm playing uh, Earth Wind and I open Minor um, White Mage, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to mulligan that. I'm looking for Simi or Moogle. Um, and as in last resort, I'm looking for Wool. 
And so most decks you would keep. What about Zidane? Uh, I would like Zidane, and I'm always happy if I have to turn one Zidane as opposed to any other forward turn one in the random match. Because in the yeah. random match, they're going to overcommit. And then what happens is, so like you go turn one wall, and they're like, oh, crap, I don't want to lose a forward, so I'm going to play a big guy in front of his, or I'm going to play a bunch of guys out. Um, and then you play, you on tap and you play your wall, you pump your Zidane to be bigger than their guy. And then you take their guy from their hand anyway. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Zidane puts a weird stranglehold on the game. Sometimes if you go turn one Zidane, like a lot of people, there's two people, either a, drop you, all their forwards and play backups or they panic and like play one backup and then like summon, remove it. And then they have no forwards. And then you just play another thing and kill them anyway. You know how many cards deal with Zidane though? A lot. Oh yeah, no. Lot. I've been. It's it, we're, not, we're not talking like the same thing as like Jesper, where it's like it skews the game. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I I have won games where my opponent had Wall, Ishtola, Shadow Lord, and I'm playing Turbo Ice. Um, oh yeah, no. I had Grace Felger, uh, Wall, Barbarisha, and Maria on the board against Turbo. Did this huge combo turn where Hecaton fought, pinged. Mar- Mar- Maria and wall pinged and killed like four guys. One was left, lost that game. Yeah. So, th- and that's the thing. I don't think that just like going wall pass is good enough. Um, there is some luck involved, and that's okay. It's a TCG. I get that. Um, but yeah, so I just, you know, I when we're choosing our decks, we're really trying to like plan around that. Um, it's just been rough. It's been a rough grind. We've been, we've been stressing out a little bit. Uh, but I think it's it's time for us just to say, you know, hey, like we're here for a reason. Uh, not that everyone else isn't either. You know, every, everyone made that grind. Um, so not I'm not saying that we deserve it over anyone else. But, you know, like we made nationals for a reason. We deserve to be there. So now it's just our turn to prove that we deserve to be at Worlds. Um, and I think that's where we stand right now. So yeah. um, are there anything – is there anything you're looking forward to? I know some people are looking forward to meeting up the community. Uh I'm looking forward to nationals being over so everyone can get back to being friendly and sharing <laughs> decks. And I get, I get message. I get so many, Oh, anyway, I don't want to go to, I, I'm looking forward to nationals being over. I honestly got am. Um, and I hope when it's over, I'm wearing a hoodie, uh, <laughs> with the hoodie on. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> if, if I'm not, I'm not, and that's okay. Um, but you know, I am looking forward to hanging out with people. I'm looking forward to, to meeting, uh, a lot of new faces out there. I'm getting a lot of, I'm almost worried it's seeing. gonna be too good. Like we're gonna have like too much community meetup and too much interaction, and we're not gonna, you know, be enough business minded. Which I mean, you and I tend to snap back into it pretty easy, but like there is the real concern. You know, we have this huge team. Like we may kind of just start socializing a lot more than you know, grind, grind, grind business. Well, I mean, you know me. That's not me. Like you, <laughs> you know that I'm like grind, grind, grind. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, while well, you guys are out of in and out, like I will probably be locked <laughs> in a hotel room testing somewhere with someone. Um, yeah. Whether it's you guys, whether it's Jordan D's team, whether it's rando person that wants to test with me off the street, whatever I can get some matches in, that's what I'm looking to do. Yeah, somebody um, said on the post they wish they could play like with you or whatever. Like, I'd be cool if you could like find them and. Oh, I would. Yeah, absolutely. Before. If they're there. Um, now, I have a question for you. Sure. So. Obviously, you've heard everyone's opinions and their proje- or, uh, predictions for who's going to top and this and that. No. Do you feel extra pressured because you're favored to be in top eight? Or no. are you just kind of like, eh, No, my thing? <laughs> um, I got three buys. Uh, top, I should make top 31. Uh, if I don't, I don't. And that's the thing. Like, At the end of the day, it's a TCG. Um, you're, there's, there's some variance to it. I could lose. I could win. Um, I don't feel extra pressure. Um and, and I, I think that I used to, but now I'm just enjoying the game and having a good time. The only thing I feel pressure about is beating Turbo Ice or playing Turbo Ice. And, and I really do feel like a large amount of pressure towards those two things. Um, like, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose to Turbo Ice. And if I get 3-0'd and get knocked out of the tournament by Turbo Ice, like, there is a good chance I just leave the game for a little bit. Um, not vindictively. Uh, just just until, you know, that's fixed or whatever. Um, or to whoever wins this thing shows me that it's how easy it is to beat it. And I just was th- wasn't thinking outside the box enough. Right. Um, like, and the sad thing is, like, we could probably play Mono Fire and destroy Ice, I don't think or so, at least no. do very well against it. I don't think so. But well, you get like VV because VV can kill something and block something and maybe kill. Like, you kill their Thaumaturge, block their Argath kind of thing. 
Yeah. Then you have like Zonda if he ever gets on the board, he attacks and kills things. Like every I don't time. know if Hebe's ever gonna kill anything other than an Argath. Like they never have cards in their hand, so Guess that's true if they don't keep one card, but yeah, they don't, they just don't ever really like at least yeah. when I was playing the deck, I I would have to double Jesper up and I would just discard. So, but I guess like to make it really clear, yes, I feel a little pressure to do well, but no, like the pressure isn't coming from outside because people expect me to be the top. It's coming from myself because I put in the time, and the effort, and I'd like to have something to show for that. Uh, making right. top eight would be the goal. Uh, I, I wonder if you have. But, close to like the most hours logged on octagon of players um no of probably vince it, no vince or greg they're both constantly on while i'm on so they have a lot of hours the problem with my vince, hours are you though, is like, no no like or... like drake oh, oh okay gotcha. so like the thing is like when you see those two on though they're always playing the same deck grinding it and grinding it and grinding it and maybe changing one card and grinding it and grinding it and grinding it Whereas I change decks about two or three times a day, uh, quite literally. So I don't have as, as much experience on any given deck that I'm playing, whereas they are like the masters of Scions right now. You know, um, you know, like Chris is now going to play Scions too in the, the LCQ. Wait, um, what? He's, what? what? <laughs> he's what been did on that Scions happen? for like a week now, man. But yeah, yeah he, he said on a podcast less than a week ago, I'm 100% locked for Vice Kings. Oh, was it less than a week ago? Okay, then he it must have been the day after that he switched to Scions. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, he's like, I'm 100% locked. I've been grinding it out. I feel good about it. There's nothing changed my mind. Apparently something changed his mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It might have been that Scions changed his mind. I mean, Ida is a hell of a card, right? So, I, Yeah, It really does feel like that, except for it has haste half the time. Uh, Armor Wife with haste and like some kind of weird... It bolts things on attack. I don't know how to... House to <laughs> like infernal it, it infernal titans yeah, something infernal titan, yeah. right it, like infernal titans things Oof. right infernal it's, glory. it's it's actually it actually does way more than infernal titan does though actually oh like, yeah in comparison like it it just doom blades things oh, when infernal it attacks <laughs> oh, um, anyway so i i'm excited i don't i don't feel that sort of pressure to top um you know i think people People forget that it is a card game and it's hard to win. Uh, there can only be one winner at the end of the day, you know, and 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 nobody has been that good besides Jordan so far. You know, nobody has won two of these things. Um, I, I guess if you count the Petite Cup, then I've won two, but it was, yeah, it was only like 45 people or something like that. Yeah, I don't. I would. I wouldn't count it. But like, no, no. These day two. Well, no. Petit Cup was day two. Well, the, these bigger, large tournaments. Jordan D is the only one who's won two of them. Um, mm -hmm. so he can do it. Uh, everyone else still has to prove themselves. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned, every person that is there is um worthy of being there for the most part. There are some people that probably you know squeaked in or whatever, but. What are you going right. to do? What are you going to do? Yes, yeah, so that's uh, 80. I was just checking the attendance on his two wins. I was yeah. just curious. Because the, the one was what? Toronto was the other one? Toronto, yep. And um, Indy. Yeah, Indy, there were yep. 80 people. Yep. And then... Which is pretty dope. Um, you know, the, the Meta Potion has picked up... Uh, you know, Josh Gardner and Andy, which obviously strengthens their team somewhat. Um, but, you know, the team was already, the team already had Dan, <laughs> had Kyle, right? Like, had Okimoto, yeah. Brian, like, Rice. I mean, like, their team is just so good. It'll be hard to beat them. Um, but at the end of the day, they're just human beings who play the same pieces of cardboard that you have. Sometimes they're foils, sometimes they're not. Um <laughs> In the in the case of like Andy and Okimoto, my, my set of non-foil thaumaturges. Yeah, oftentimes they're not foil. Um, so like I already have a bit of an advantage because my turbo <laughs> ice deck is completely foil, I believe. Um, I have to double check. I can't think of any cards that aren't foil. Yeah. So, you know, I have a little bit of advantage there. But at the end of the day, I'm also human, so I could lose to a random person playing a Lua. Because yeah, I've never lost to a card more than a Lua, probably. Other than now, Squall. I've definitely lost to Squall more times in the last week than I have Squall a Lua is... in the history of the game so far. Yeah. Or by history, I mean since Opus 5. Or Opus 4 is when it dropped, right? 
Five? Uh, Illua was five, I believe. Five. Okay. It feels yeah. old because I'm so sick of losing to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... You know, it, it, and I always said, like, if, if you don't... If you can't Good players beat it, can beat it. Join it. So now it's like, well, do I play Illua? Or, or am I now on the turbo plan? You know, just play this deck. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Right. I'm going to try out the monster deck. I'm going to try to build it. Um, I will try to build water with... Ash Razzler, I guess, um, per your recommendation. Um, other than that, I, you know, I guess I do like that. You see, you have on the let's say you're on the play, you have six cards, so you can use two for that, two for that. Okay, so you can't go Ash and two backups on turn one, but you can go Ash Razzler, which should put you in an okay situation. Um, right, because then at least they have to work harder. Uh, the only thing I said is like, you draw two cards a turn. Yep. You have to save them to untap her if you want to aggress ever. Yep. Um, but the deck also, you can play Fame at Migogo. Yep. Um, I had to deal with that last night when I was testing. It was very annoying because yep. he you know, only had like two backups, but he would just go like tap one, play Gogo. And I was like, all right, <laughs> got to gotta find my squall and get rid of your card. Like, Fun times. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be a good time. Um, so we talked a little bit. So are there any decks that you wish you had more time to test out? Uh, I mean, monsters. I feel comfortable enough with the general archetype of monsters, like the control feel of it and the sequencing of it, where like I can get by. Okay. But like obviously I'd like more time on that. Um, I wish I... Well, I know you looked into it for a while, and then you kind of dwindled off, so I didn't push it at all. But Fire Earth yeah, could have yeah. maybe had a very good build in it. Uh, and... Well, I have no doubt that it does have a good build. Like... It, and there might be like a a matte version with um. This is coming out after it's Nationals, like correct? Saban. Yeah. Okay, so Irving, <laughs> Irving from Jacksonville, uh, this mad scientist has a deck that has. Is fire... Irving from Jacksonville? Yes. Oh, why did I assume Orlando? I thought so too. He no, he plays with Max and stuff. So Fire Earth monsters, like yeah, it's a, both, it was a cool deck with bombs. both Kafka's goblins, yeah. bombs, uh, Gigas, Bonga Thief, uh, Ultimas, Chateau. He gave up on it for Nationals, Nick. or is he still playing? No, I, I'm pretty sure that's what he's playing. Oh, um, it is a that's cool why deck. I, I haven't talked about it since then. I haven't I haven't publicly tested wanna, it. Yeah, you don't want to spoil it for him. I but, oh my gosh, that deck is sweet, and he had like Leo in it and stuff. Yeah. Leo was always huge. He would have he would just take absorb damage all game, which is you know. We're, we're used to that. We've played monsters and stuff like that. But then you look at his board and he's got like six or seven monsters just like in a pile. And then just wipes your board and destroys you for the rest of the game and you never can come back. Yep. That deck was sweet and I wish I could have put a little more time into it to see if it's something that, that I would be interested fun. in. Because yeah. it catches people off guard too. Like who sees fire earth monsters on a regular basis? Nobody. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that, so, sound, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, you know, so did anyone from Orlando qualify? I don't think so, actually. Oh, jeez. Um, wait, hmm. Let me think. Because the guy who played the Mannequins deck where I misplayed and uh -huh. got wrecked on stream, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's Orlando local, right? I don't know. I, I don't know if he's qualified. Okay. I think he... Hmm, no, I actually, I think he was fighting for his life that day. So, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Well, either way, you know, uh, what's the what's the one thing that you're going to do? Like, So, you get, you get, you get to Cali... Um, first thing you do, probably nap or pass out on a bench. <laughs> no, I find Cause I don't I, get in until like what nine o'clock at night, I think, or maybe it's like right. But 11 who are you or... staying with? I think Greg. So okay, or... you're staying at Greg's. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause you can only have like one person for the right. night or whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna be staying with Sam Twelve Tool. Yeah. Tool, I think. Okay, uh, cool. So you'll get to see those guys. You get to see an Earth Wind deck with Sid. Yeah. Um, so I'll yeah. be, you know, I'll be staying with them, but I don't know when they get there yet. So I'm gonna probably be at the airport. I'll probably go to the hotel uh, and get some food or something for myself. And then I think the RVA guys are getting there around 11 ish local time. Yeah. So I only have to wait like two hours or so, and they'll be there. And then I can kind of hook up with them, and we can go around and do whatever. If they go to their hotel room, I can maybe take a nap on their couch. <laughs> That's cool. And, and the hotel so. is actually right next to the. Yeah, they have shuttles directly from the airport to the hotel. It's like all like one campus, so to speak. Oh, cool. All right. So I'll, when I land, I can just like, if I haven't heard from Greg or whatever, like uh, come hang out with you guys until I get home. Yeah, 100%. Greg. Cool. 
Yeah. All right. Well, I'm Which really is... looking forward to it, man. Yeah. Um, be- you know, uh, before before we leave, I do want to do a special, a couple of special shout outs. Um, uh, Gregory Cole for hosting uh, me. Um, you're awesome. I, I literally, I, I, I was in between jobs. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Um, end of story. Um, special shout out to James uh, Lockwood. Thank you so much um, for making this possible and, and, and helping me out with this. Um, and then probably a huge, huge shout out to Ian. Um, Ian has been the number one person to test with me on Octagon. I've been begging people to test left and right, and he's been willing to go test whatever I want. Hey, what do you want to play today? I want to test against mono water. Hey, I want to test against mono ice. Uh, he's probably grinded like, I don't know, maybe 50 to 60 games with me of mono ice. And He's he probably like one of the top mono ice players in the U.S. now. Because oh, I have no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, he, I literally don't think he ever made a single mistake in all of testing against me, which was fantastic. It really helped the level of, uh, of testing and for me to see how good the ice deck was. Mm-hmm. That being said, I the part of the biggest shout out is because man, that guy is a mono fire person through and through. It's his favorite <laughs> deck. He's obsessed with it. He's a he's got VV tattoos, um, and he's willing to scum it up and and play mono ice for me. That's been amazing. Um, shout out to my wife for allowing me to make this trip happen, which is awesome. Um, and, and just for all the for the RVA guys, um, for you know Jonathan, Emo Tempest. Uh, for for John for um, Alex down in Miami too uh, to to the, the Turks man there's so many people who have made this like happen um, right and put together this this team to where we can talk and discuss and and you know originally it started out to be a Nationals team uh, I don't see it dissolving um, we'll have our different podcasts we'll still have the Choker Bros they'll still have the RVA they'll still have, you know what Emo Tempest and, and the Turks. But like I see this team sticking around and being in it for the long haul, which is awesome. Um, so a special shout out to all of you guys. Um, anything else you want to say, Zach, before we close out? Same. Uh, <laughs> nah, so uh, no, nah, just I mean, thank you to my girlfriend. She puts up with me a lot with all my traveling, and like when I was grinding the LQs, like yeah. she doesn't like being alone for too long. So uh, yeah, that was pretty rough, and she's yep. you know. Not not the happiest about this weekend, but you know she she knows it's important to me. So yeah, good good. good. Um, well, and, and and like MVP, like I said, or like you said, Ian, pff, oh yeah, that dude's been insane in our. Yeah. I, and I don't even know how much you've tested with him. That's what I'm saying. Like he's just yeah, been grinding not... everything for us, and he's like he's in school full time, works full time. So and technically, he would have taken my LQ spot if he could have went and whatever. He would have crushed me in those finals. Yeah. So like he's nationals class player so oh for sure yeah no no doubt that we'll see him next year um no, no doubt um and, and thank you to all of our locals um for helping us test uh for showing up when alejandro from miami um was in town we were able to fire mm-hmm. an impromptu tournament on a thursday night which is very rare here yeah. um and by very rare i mean it was the first tournament we've ever had on a thursday and the first <laughs> and the second tournament actually ever to a fire impromptu um yes the first one is the very first Friday we ever did a cool stuff. Um, and then we have been doing Fridays for a long time since only taking a small break. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, one, I guess one more shout out to, uh, to sunshine games and to, uh, cool stuff, Tampa's employees. Uh, <laughs> I, I still won't say shout out to cool stuff, but shout out to cool stuff employees. Cause all of them have been like trying so hard to make sure we into Chris and his group, um, uh, sunshine for, just constantly trying to make sure we have a place to battle uh, and making sure we're taken care of. Making sure we're advertised. Well, but there's, there's no substitute for slinging cardboard by yep. hand. So, yep. Anyway, um, again, one more shout out to cars, Thank you for the, the sponsorship uh, for this podcast and for us. Congratulations to Cody. Um, and all I got to say is uh, top four of that uh, last thing is top four of the LCQ. It's going to be Tran. Um, Tran? Yeah, Win. Wait, uh, who, tra- who Tran? Uh, Nigia? I can't pronounce his name. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Win, uh, Chris Adams, and Gregory Cole. There's your top four. Um, <laughs> congrats, guys. 
Uh, we'll, we'll see. You, we'll see you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys on Saturday. Uh, you guys have earned it, no matter what. Uh, you're you're all stars in my in my book. And Matthew Rice is alone at a bar. Oh, I somewhere. forgot Matthew Rice because I forgot he was playing. <laughs> I just forgot that he was playing. Oh God! Now if he gets fifth, it's my fault. If he gets fifth, it's one hundred percent my if fault. If he's been testing with Josh Garner, he'll get fifth. Yeah, but Josh Garner's a lock for thirty seconds. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Bubble Boys. Yep. Anyway, they, they should they should start uh they should start their own team called the Bubble Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm your host Sam State Prime. And I'm Zach Brell. We will see you this weekend on stream. Yep. <laughs>